What's up, everybody, and welcome back to this episode of the Dead Funny Review Show. I'm your host, Chris. Joining me today are my co-hosts, Kelsey and Dylan, and we have a special guest star appearance, Cody. Hello! He also does YouTube. Coming over here to check out some stuff that Dead Funny's on. And he turned me on to this show, to be fair. Love Death Robots. I sat down and watched the entire fucking season in one setting. I did great. too, dude. It was so good. Was so this is this is bad, but I have to tell you a fun story about how I watched this show. Go ahead. Um, I do not suggest anyone does this. This is not a good idea to do. Definitely had it on while I was commuting to work, like an hour back and forth. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then I got no, to work. He's like sitting in the parking lot, like. <laughs> Gotta finish this episode. Gotta finish this going. episode. <laughs> oh man! Just out of curiosity, so I can know as your friend, how much of the drive was spent watching TV versus how much of the drive was spent driving? I mean, I watched my favorite episode in the car, so you tell me. You know. <laughs> okay. I sit in a lot of I sit in a lot of stop traffic. Huh? I I have a lot of contact with Cody's child. Like Cody has a child. <laughs> Uh, I was mostly listening to it. You know, a lot of it was told through the dialogue, so yeah, pretty much. Which is your favorite episode, Cody? It, it was Suits. It was Suits, the one that had the least dialogue and the most shooting. <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue. You know, what's cool is that you'll know which one it is if Kelsey, if you pull up your Netflix list and you search for the episode. <laughs> it's the one with farmers. It's the fourth the episode. Movie. It is oh. the fourth episode, guys. I figured it out. Huh? <laughs> it's the fourth episode. I figured it out. Good on it, it you. It is Dylan. the fourth episode. Good on you, man. I just I love the farmer that talked about how his robot was a work of art, <laughs> yeah, and everyone just made fun good. of it for being yeah. ugly. Yeah. I just I resonated with that character. <laughs> like, look at this ugly thing. Like, it's beautiful. You don't understand. It has parts Honestly, falling off. I recognize that the viewers don't know this, but Cody and I have been friends for well over 10 years. And when I watched that episode, when that particular wait character... Wait a second, how old do you think I am? Um, Cody, how fucking long do you think you and I have been friends? For about eight years. Cody, I started college 10 years ago. At this moment. You did, but the thing is, I wasn't in college then. I met you when I was a sophomore. You did not meet me when you were a sophomore. You met me before oh, you were a sophomore. Cody laying down the facts. Kelsey, you're older than me. <laughs> yes. I'm, I'm older than you. God, oh, you're fucking he old. Age. Jesus. What I'm saying is, we can't have been friends for that long because I met you when I was 18 and I'm 26. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this is pedantic. What the, what the fans don't know is that the chroma key, all of Kelsey's gray hairs out whenever I'm trying to like set up her screen. So that is no, no, guys, guys, you don't know. So like, w like three weeks ago, I discovered two gray hairs, literally two. Both of them were in my eyebrows, and I'm like, how do I deal with like gray hairs in my eyebrows? And one of my coworkers came in, and she's like, you pluck those shit out, and I'm like. I will do that. Thank you, ma'am. Or you just start like, looking like Baba Yaga and own 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 your appearance. You oh, know, you're good. Yeah. Oh, no, no. Just live, live Once they get to this account. shit, I'm owning my Baba Yaga status. I'll start giving like young kids like marriage advice. I don't care if they're eight. I'm giving them marriage advice. I got this. I can see I'm first first, first, time, everybody first time I ever. Kelsey's 43 now, so she hasn't got too much longer to go. <laughs> Yes, I am totally 43. If you can't tell from the wrinkles around my eyes, I'm totally 43. I just say, every time I watch like any of our content with you, I'm like, God damn, she's old. Jesus. I'm ancient. I am truly ancient. Too bad, too bad this isn't a podcast. I just read the title of like, God damn, Kelsey's old. I hate you, Chris. I mean, to be fair, if we go back and listen to the first podcast, all of us are like, this is our favorite video game. This is our favorite TV show. Kelsey's like, I listen to Supreme Court podcast. I like Law no, and I Order. I do. I gotta make sure I'm up at five o'clock for Jeopardy. <laughs> the Price is Right. If I told you about my hobbies, I would also seem like a terrible old man. Also, I have a baby, so I mean that kind of throws you into a new layer of old. The baby. Kelsey does it. I don't have gray hair, and I don't have a child. Cody doesn't have gray hair, and he has a child. So yep. that lets you know which of us ages better. <laughs> Oh man! 
Oh, I'm just, I'm also, just excited. Cody is the cutest child in existence. I'm just excited that the retirement home that Kelsey's at had a good enough Wi-Fi for her to be part of this channel. Honestly, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> Oh. Like, let's be real. None of this showed up until one of my like very, very super close friends showed up on the podcast. <laughs> at which point, everybody's like, "Kelsey's old and ancient yeah. and totally oh. irrelevant." Everybody <laughs> laughed at her. To be fair, I didn't see you were irrelevant. I just pointed out that you're a year older than me, so we couldn't have met exactly. ten years ago because I was sixteen at the time. Kelsey, it's okay. <laughs> when I come to visit you in your retirement home, I'll bring you some prune juice. You look like you need oh. some. See, Dylan, I knew Dylan loved me. Screw the rest of you. Dylan at least loved me. He'll bring me prune juice. Fuck all of you. All right. Well, I guess we should go ahead and jump on the topic since uh, it's about to be bedtime over there at the retirement home for Kelsey. So we got to make sure we get it. It is my bedtime. I'm sleepy. <laughs> I have a baby. I go to bed at eight. Fair enough. Fair enough. I hate everyone. <laughs> Good Lord. Anyway, so Love, Death, Robots. Netflix. TV series, the way it was described to me, which I thought was pretty good, which, well, I mean, obviously you guys were already preview to that, but for the viewers, is that it's a modern version of the Twilight Zone. I kind of get that. That's, fine. That, that, that. that's a good way to look at it. I feel that. Um, man, whenever we talk about the modern aspect, though, I, I, I look at TV today, because it's funny, because I'll try to, like, uh, recommend stuff for my grandpa to watch on Netflix all the time, because he, he has the shit to my Netflix account. And, like... He can't watch any of it. He's like, there's too much fucking cussing. Or, there's too much this. Or, there's too much that. And I'm sitting here watching this. I was like, there's no way in fuck I can pitch this on my grandpa. He's going to tell me to get bent. That's going to happen. Like, yeah. I, kinda, <laughs> I like want to suggest this show to my dad because he's like pretty into this type of stuff. But then I'm like, there's a lot of nudity and oh, violence in God. this thing. So much nudity. Uh, I like the first episode. It's like tits. I was like, all right, cool. The next episode was like tits and ass. I was like, all right, cool. So then we start getting a little bit of agony, and I'm like, all right, this is in the next like six episodes, just dick of balls everywhere. And I'm like, all right. Okay. I will say, episode three was like, that was a pretty nightmarish use of nudity. That was oh, The Witness, yeah. where yeah. there's like the creepy psychedelic brothel, and I'm like, yeah. For oh, this yeah. made me as uncomfortable as Showgirls. Yikes. <laughs> this is. As I was watching it, I was like, Man, Netflix is really fucking pushing their boundaries right now. <laughs> Holy shit. Ooh, it's all Game of Thrones' fault. Well, that's what I was thinking. I, I was arguing with my friends about it, and he's all like, yeah, he's like, I mean, there was too much nudity. I was like, I don't know about that. I feel like if we were to do, like, a more recent season of Game of Thrones versus that, it would win the nudity category. I'm just Yeah, that Game of Thrones there. has definitely toned it down. It was ever but since I felt Park. like... When she did her contract and she took her nudity out, it just started like getting like lower and lower and lower. And oh, lower. Interesting. Not to mention Natalie Dormer, who is like all for getting naked anytime she's on camera, she died. So you know, then it was like, all right, well, you used her real name, and I was like, she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, <laughs> Marjorie. My bad. That is true. <laughs> Natalie Dormer is fine. Thank the Lord. She's amazing. Oh, no, man. but I, I will give this, like, as far as, like, Netflix and their, like, kind of pandering use of nudity, I would give this, like, it's better than Altered Carbon for just being like, hey, this scene's boring. Why don't you get in the shower? It at least always felt relevant to the story Fair and, like, enough. it fit in. Whereas Altered Carbon was like, well, she's pretty and we don't have anything else to do in this scene, so she's naked in it, I guess? Naked like, or naked. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. There's we, this this isn't an action episode, so we gotta we gotta give the audience something, right? Otherwise, they'll stop watching it and start. About the it. only thing good about Ultra Carbon, I didn't like the story behind it. it I did not uh, either. I was super disappointed. I thought I was gonna love it, and then it wasn't Love, Death, and Robots. I mean, it was garbage. I I mean, I like the fighting in Alton Carbon, but not the scenes. But Love, Death, and Robots are so much. It's it's by far the best Netflix series. Netflix original I've seen so I far. I wouldn't go that far, but I'm glad you will. Well, it's Stranger Things, but <laughs> yeah, I was, Stranger, I was Things, Stranger, Stranger Things is in its own category. We can't even like, it's like, you know, Man. up there. Well, Stranger Things has a consistent story, and you can't compare something that's meant to like the closest thing from a Netflix original standpoint that we can compare this to would be Black Mirror. And to me, this felt like an art version so an animated version of black mirror is what this series felt like 
and I, to be totally clear and totally transparent, I didn't watch all of Black Mirror, but the fact that each episode was its own story, like they weren't consistent stories the way yeah. that, say, Stranger Things was. Each story was its own episode. Each, like, it, it was all contained within that one sphere. And each sphere, each episode has its own art style. So it's like this is an experiment of both art and storytelling and characters. Like each episode is its own thing. Yeah, and I think we is, need to respect that. It's amazing how different they are, but how they all do kind of have like love, death, and robots. Um, yeah. Because like I, I guess yeah I agree right Black Mirror is kind of similar in in tone, but I quit on Black Mirror after the first episode, and everyone's like. But, I know the first episode sucks, but you gotta like give it a chance. I'm like, man, they only get one they only get one chance at a first impression. And <laughs> Sunny's Edge was great. It blew me away. I did not see it coming at all. And I'm like that really bad sucks. at guessing plot. So it's kinda nice, but I was like, man, the like seduction scene with a reversal and then another monster reversal. I'm like yeah, you go, Tiny Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, that that I'm actually I'm actually one of the worst people whenever it comes to like the whole you know get, predicting the movies and shit. I'm so fucking good at it. It's a goddamn curse. It's a goddamn it is. Curse. It sucks. I'll be when you know there, it's gonna happen. Yeah. It's terrible. I, I I went to a movie theater with some friends and we were watching. Uh, it was like the last Underworld or whatever. And like as it's going down, I literally was like. <laughs> This motherfucker's going to die. And they're like, what are you talking about? I was like, this person's going to die. And they're like, no, no, it's, not. it's like 10 minutes from the movie and that person dies. I was like, I already knew it. All right, fuck this, dude. Game of Thrones, I guessed so much of that shit before it happened. I was so fucking upset. I was so mad. And the one thing I didn't guess was my favorite character, Jon Snow, his death. I did not guess his death. Fucking literally spoiled for me because I was an I was an episode behind. Yeah, spoiled freaking yes, me, me too. Oh. At my wedding. Oh, that's like, that's. I walked into a room with one of my friends going, and then Jon Snow died, and I'm like, on my wedding day, you betrayed me. <laughs> on my wedding day, Eric. Mine was a cell phone app, so I was just scrolling through. It wasn't even words. It wasn't something I can look away from. It was a fucking picture. I was like, really, fucking really. I didn't even get a chance. Nothing. I was like, fuck me, dude. Oh, my gosh. But anyways, that first episode got me. I did not see that shit coming at all. I was like, okay. Like, the first yeah, episode was really good. Yeah, I liked how it set the tone of, like, we're going to be really brutal as we crush her head oh, real yeah, that was slowly. Fucking nuts. Like, ooh. God. Yeah, that was, that was see, something different for sure. See, Chris, I'm with you, except the audience in this particular situation is my husband. Like, I am always way more like, oh, this is where they're going with this than my spouse is. And my spouse is always like, Kelsey, I need you to shut the fuck up and not fucking talk for the rest of the goddamn season. I'm like, I know what's going to fucking happen. You be surprised when you're here, <laughs> but I know what's going to fucking happen because I can tell because AKA foreshadowing that my husband does not understand at all. Yeah, Man yeah. Mandy just makes fun of everything that I watch. It's it's <laughs> impossible. Like we were watching the fish tank one, and she's like, "Why are there fishes? Why is he floating? That shark looks weird." And I'm like, this is, "But it's." I'm like watching this, and she's like, "That looks dumb." Like, <laughs> that and chick flicks. I can't watch romance movies around her. She loses her mind. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. For the viewers who don't know, Cody's wife is one of my favorite people in existence. <laughs> like both Cody and, and his just wife are in just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Both of you are of my favorite people in existence. Like there's a very small group, and both of you are in it. Oh my god, I love you, people. Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. So just to kind of give like a little bit of a, uh, uh, I guess, detail for the viewers, if you haven't watched it, it's a show on Netflix. Um, I mean, you definitely need to be of age, in my opinion, to watch the show. That's for sure. God. Um, Otherwise, you'll see a lot of body parts you may not have seen otherwise. Yeah. Well, and you'll also see the insides of all of those body parts. <laughs> that is <also laughs> true. I just flipped over to Sucker of Souls, and I'm like, oh, yeah, remember that part where a little kid gets cut in half, and yeah. then you see his halves get dropped on the ground, and all his bits go everywhere? That was pretty cool. Uh, that was pretty cool. I, I mean, was... don't you want to see the inside of someone's brain, Cody? Isn't that what you've been living for? Isn't no. what you go to Netflix for? No, I'm, I'm not. Well, I, I mean, in Netflix, yeah, but not in real life at all. <laughs> I mean, speaking, speaking of the episode of Sucker of Souls, did anyone else realize how literally the, it, it, the kid came apart by layer when he got cut in half? Yeah. <laughs> layer, 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 skull. Yeah. Like, well, it was the anime style. They had to be, they had to be <laughs> pressurized blood. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. 
500 PSI blood bomb as oh, yeah, soon as... Sure. And he wasn't a kid. He wasn't a kid. He was a college intern, so he wasn't a <laughs> child. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I can't remember what they called them. They had some funny name for them when they're like, yeah. I have, like, postdoc all over me. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. But also, what I don't get is, like, that episode did not end like it started. What do you mean? Like, it started with them running from the vampire, right? And it did, like, this whole scene. So I'm oh, guessing that, yeah. like, happened, like, in between when they started running later on and when they uh, in, when they wound up in the cave with all the other minor soul suckers. Yeah, that That's... was, like, the beginning of the episode was, like, five minutes before they got attacked. And then it's when they're running to meet up with the rest of their group. But that was yeah. kind of a weird yeah. introduction. It was like, it was like, I, I guess, I guess it didn't want to, like, go over it again. Yeah, I guess I didn't want to just take run time. But, but there was an amazing level yeah, of but, you know, and... like even <laughs> after they realized all the rest of the like, <laughs> Dracula creatures were there, they're just like, "Hey, let's be sarcastic." And I'm like, "And hey, you die sarcastic? Like you don't know he died and cut to black. He yeah. could have lived. That's he true. For all we know, is it, is it just he, me? He lives. Is it just me, or did anybody else? I mean, and I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure." The main mercenary guy is voiced by the fucking dude, the main farmer from the previous episode. I thought that. I thought I was wondering if it had. I wondered if there was a cast. I thought thought that. Yeah, I for sure was all like, this sounds like it's the same fucking dude. That was like it's so. I was like, if it is, they should have spread those episodes out because it was the whole time watching. I'm like, this is the fucking farmer. This is this what he did afterwards? He just say fuck the farm and just the mer- or this he what he did before? The same. Yeah, exactly. That's all I was like. It's he's the fucking like farmer. Punchy beard, though. Yep, yep. Or, or that could have been what he did before, and that's what made him go go to be a farmer. You know, he wanted to get away from vampires. He decided to kill that bugs is instead. That one odd fucking job transformation. I'm just gonna stop being a mercenary <laughs> and I'm gonna be a fucking farmer on a different planet. Let's get it. Yeah, I'm going to abandon my wife and children and go be a farmer on a different planet. Like, I don't think so, I mean, but yeah, I, I mean, suppose he's not it is possible. He, yeah. he had his wife with him. I mean, who's, who's to say Dracula didn't kill his child after the blackout? You know, that's what caused him and his wife Dylan, to move Dylan, I would love away. for you to go back and just rewrite the rest of the plot for that fucking episode. <laughs> I would love to watch no, that. No, I would. Like, I God want damn. Dylan to be personally <laughs> in charge of, like, connecting all of these episodes into one story because that... I want to see it would be horrible it'd be the worst thing you ever see i would like be coming up with random shit just to make sure it stays connected with the with the shitty ass preschool glue i use honestly it would teach me more about <laughs> how your brain works than anything else i don't, don't think know anybody how needs works. to know that yeah i'm pretty sure <laughs> that's that's a need to know basis, and I'm the only one that needs to know. Oh, <laughs> so, so I looked it up. You're, you're right. They're the same person. I figured so. I was like, oh, the he's also the future Nazi in alternate histories. Oh, okay. <coughs> Which alternate histories was another one of my favorites. That that, that one, was... one ranked pretty high. Yeah, that one's pretty. Cool. <laughs> I was kind of yeah. indifferent until there was like the space <laughs> prostitutes, and then I was like, "Yep, okay, it won me over." That, yeah. <laughs> all my favorite, all my favorites that were was, Ed. Uh, that was pretty the fucking witness. interesting. That was that was, all my favorites were the Ed. That was the definitely the part of that episode where I was like, "Netflix doesn't give a Good fuck." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one chick was just going to town on herself, and I was just like, "This is pretty goddamn interesting right now." I was like, "Holy shit." <laughs> I do think we need to have a conversation about all the faces that Hitler made before it zoomed out and showed you oh, all yeah. the things that was happening to Hitler oh, to yeah. make the faces. Sure. And I'm like, oh my god. <coughs> These are not pictures of Hitler I needed in my head. For sure. That was uh, that was pretty fucking interesting. Uh, I like the yogurt episode, too. The yogurt episode is actually really oh, good. Oh, God. I like it. Oh, that was amazing. Was I mean, I could <laughs> not stop laughing whenever it was just like, we want Ohio. <laughs> I was just like, what? <laughs> like, that was hey, just, I want that we Ohio. Want and then all of a sudden, it's just like, and then the whole economy collapsed. Except Ohio. Ohio was okay. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> They're fucking me up with this Ohio shit right now. Oh, my God. I, I thought it was mean-spirited. <laughs> <laughs> Is that because you live in Midwest, in the Midwest and you were like, aw? Kelsey, you I were one be... state further away from Ohio than I People in glass houses. <laughs> 
Oh shit! And also, Ohio is beautiful. And also, <laughs> no, it's 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 the notion that we need yogurt to tell us what to do. I'm like, oh come on, I'm not that dumb. That was I'm smart. I don't care how smart this yogurt is. Yogurt is overlord. Oh man, that was. <laughs> but the good thing is, I'm really close to Ohio. So when the yogurt takes over, you know, I just. Yeah. I got friends there. I can make it. There you go. You and your kid, you moved to Ohio, huh? Yep. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We must follow the yogurt law. Do not eat dairy. And they even found a way to sneak nudity into that one, too. That fucking chick that was... Pro- yeah, the chick that was protest. They're, they're like, first, no one oh, liked it. And then they did yeah. a protest. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I was like, oh, That's shit. right. Oh, my gosh. I was like, we couldn't just uh, yogurt. Wait, they kind of work nudity in that animated in that animate style. I was like, oh, why? Every episode needs boobs. I mean, really. <laughs> apparently, apparently. I'm a straight uh, woman. I mean, they went away from that. They went away from that. There was like every episode was just dick happens. all over the place. I was like, Jesus Christ, can we get back to the first episode, please? <laughs> Good. Lo- like the one, the one that fucking goes off the Japanese lore of Daji. The fucking nine-tailed fox seduct- yeah. seductress. The fat guy? I was like, Jesus Christ, dude. I mean, we had like a solid like three minutes of just staring at this dude fucking just rock hard. And I'm like, I mean, can we please go to a different scene already? Like, that uh. was definitely like, I was, it was like dudes or good hunting. Good hunting's the one we are just talking about. Mm-hmm. Those two were like oh, neck and neck for me. Just like, I love the relationship between that like inventor and the what? What are they called? Uh, Lu Jing. Yeah, Lu Jing. <laughs> Lu Jing. <laughs> Sorry. I, my guess is you did not say that correctly. <laughs> I'm gonna go with I did. Um, just edit it in me saying it right. Gotcha. But I thought it was really beautiful the way all the artwork looked for like the machinery. I thought it was really yeah. cool. But also, man, that was a brutal story. Oh yeah. But also one that kind of made you feel good off, at the like, end, Jesus where it's like, Christ. yeah, rip his head off. He's gross. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I liked that it wasn't a movie that, or like a message that was going backwards. You know what I mean? It was like he kind of refound magic in like a modern world. I, yeah. I thought that was clever. Yeah. I yeah, thought the easy way to go with that was just, oh, we got to go back to being magical. Like, nah, boo. Let's, let's talk about the episode Helping Hand. Since we oh, all that, know that was my brutal. favorite episode. That was rough. Oh man, like I said, I'd be okay with just dying. <laughs> like, no, I'm good. I'm not. I, I, Dude, there, man, there's like, no way in fuck it would have crossed my mind that I'm ripping off my own arm to fucking save myself. It's just, just not it's just it's the fact. It's just happening. the fact that you could slowly see her starting to feel what she was doing. Because at first she didn't. The further in she started like breaking her arm off, you could she just started feeling it more and more and more. And it's like, fuck, dude. No, Have you guys dude. seen the movie uh, Moon? No. It's no. got Sam Rockwell in it. It's very similar, I would say, to Helping Hand and, like, the dehumanizing nature of, like, oh, we'll go to space. It's like, I don't want to do that, actually. It's, it seems horrible. And it no. seems like once you're out there, it's just like, well, you're a number. Like, <laughs> we're not spending a bajillion trillion dollars to go and get you and you're a space trucker, so rip your arm off and get home. <laughs> like, okay. I just love the I mean, part where I, she's like, I need help. And they're all like, all right, boys are on their way in 45 minutes. And she just looks like 14 minutes left of the oxygen. It's like, well, fuck me. Yeah, right? <laughs> I'm also trying to figure out if, like, when I was watching that and she, like, realized, wait a minute, I can sacrifice everything from my elbow down for this cause. And I, like, I had the moment when I'm like, would A, that thought occur to me, and then B, would the strength to, like, actually sacrifice a whole portion of my body in order to stay alive and actually like follow through with the process would that occur to me and then would i do it and those are two huge questions you know what i mean like because it's it's like um i think you could like push a button that's like logical that doesn't require you to viscerally rip your own arm off yeah. But when it's just like, oh, I push this button, and then I know my arm's going to fall off, it distances you enough. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like trying to, like, and this is gross, but, like, try to bite your own finger off sometime. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. you can't do it because your body uh-huh. stops you because it's like, no. This is you it. can do oh, it. You can bite natural. way harder than it takes to, like, bite a finger off, but your body stops you from doing it. I don't. Yeah. I don't think I could rip my arm off. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't die. know. If you're, yeah, if you're gonna die, some people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's if I ever, if live. I ever go to space, 
not even gonna spit. I'm gonna have them custom make like a little rain thing that goes right here. That way, in case I ever have to, I can just hit a button and it'll just insta chop my arm off. <laughs> <It's done. laughs> but then I'm you need a second it. shot. You need two shots. No, 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 no. Dylan, that would backfire so bad. He'd like <laughs> get out there to the, the to the station or some shit, and as soon as he like grabs the action, like hits the button and chops his fucking arm off, he just <laughs> floats in arm. face like <laughs> no, it backfired. <laughs> Oh, okay, hey, hey, everything back Chris said is back. absolutely <coughs> correct. But more importantly, rather than developing a system that cuts your own arm off, why don't you develop a fucking rope that you can <laughs> pull your ass yeah. fucking in? I was going to say, well, well, class, see, so, well yeah. see, the thing is, ast actual astronauts that do what she did actually have something that is attached to the ship. That is right? Helpful. Because why the fuck would you? But wouldn't it wouldn't make sense it's and it wouldn't be a story plot. if. Yeah, if it would make sense, it would be plot. If it was, if time. it was in the thing. No, most importantly, the like Dylan and I both saw plot, and plot was like, "I'll find a functional way to rip off my arm," and I was like, "No fucking, I won't. I will find a functional way to pull me out, pull my ass back in." Like, I just, I just, this like is the difference though. between Dylan and I as people. I, I just <laughs> swim back. I, I, I do like Sorry, that Kendall. though, like. Dylan had so many places to go to get, like, any kind of thought of how to get back. And he still was just, no, I'm still going to take my arm off. Like, I'm not in danger. I'm just well, still going to take my arm off. what you can do then is use your pressurized blood as, like, a jet <laughs> Yeah, true. To just blast just yourself back like out. Superman. Because oh. that would have been my first thought. Like, if I stuck out there, I'm like, man, dude, I wonder. I wonder if I make a big enough hole in my pants, can I just, like, fart my way back to the station? Is that possible? Like, that would have been my first thought right off the bat is how to propel myself in a direction. It would not have been, you know what, I'm going to freeze myself, and then I'm going to break off a part of me. Like, I would have had so many more thoughts that would have crossed my mind before it would have got to, all right, self-mutilation, let's get it. Like, it would have I'll took pee, a little while I'll to get there. I'll fart, I'll shit, like, I'm well, I will make this happen. I wouldn't pee. That, that part wouldn't happen. Believe it or not. I think I would do that first. <laughs> I right, will say this. step one. <laughs> I will pee. say this. <laughs> I think... There's no way. I think I would have an easier time <laughs> freezing my arm off than freezing my dick off. I'm just throwing that out there now. It would be very hard for me to know that if I open up my pants, that's gone. That 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 is physically that is some soft skin well, down okay. there. All right, I mean, that is gone. Has a zipper, right? I don't think that's an option. <laughs> that's true. It would be a lot that's easier true. to break that off because you know, like bone, you have to do this. But. Oh, Dylan. I mean, that's a fair point. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to make fun of anybody for size or anything, but I don't know if there's enough mass for anybody to make a dip. I'm trying to throw that to get yourself back to the I can't confirm my dick does not have enough mass to throw it and make a dip. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all heard it here live on Dead Funny. Well, not live. Like, Y'all heard it here on Dead Funny. I like Kelsey's got away. I like the fact of Kelsey's Kelsey just sitting in space, going, "I really wish I had a dick to cut off right now, so I could try to get back to the fucking satellite." Uh, she's like, "Fuck!" <laughs> oh, that's great. All right, so all right, so let's move on to another episode. Let's let's talk about. Blind spot. That was another one of my uh, more like odd animated ones. What was spot blind spot? I forgot. Uh, it was about the robot uh, thieves, the gang of uh, the gang of cyborgs. Oh yeah, that was the robot thieves oh. that were going to try to get the cash, and then it turns out they're actually invincible, and yeah. they, they're like the memories you downloaded yeah. beforehand. They were super cool. Well, yeah, I could have taken a I, like, I, like, I, I was like, I was like, oh no, he died. No, he died. No, he died. And at the end, it's like, oh, well, that just fucking takes away all of my emotion towards these jackasses. I was kind of <laughs> thinking that, though, as I'm watching it, and I'm like watching us fly around and die. I was definitely thinking in my head, like, you hit control S before this mission, right, guy? Yeah, like, <laughs> please tell me you hit control S before this mission. The, the, the thing that ruined that one for me, easily for me to note that was going to happen, was just how like okay they were with the fact that this dude was just like oh yeah i forgot to tell you about that oh yeah i forgot to tell you about that i was like there's something going on they're not dead because i mean if i'm on like if if all four of us are pulling some heist like this and all of a sudden it's like cody's like oh yeah i forgot to mention that i'd be like you motherfucker like, i'd be <laughs> i'd be furious because like i'm gonna die and that's just it these guys did not give a shit they're all like 
oh, well, thanks for fucking up again. And I'm like, well, he's done this previously, apparently. No, so. Chris, it would, no, Chris, it'd be fine, because if we were on a heist like that, it would be in a make-believe world, and you would be Blade Phoenix, and I would be Armand. I would so just let you die. That's demolished. just all there is to that. I would just let <laughs> Dylan die. I'd be like, you know what? I give up. Here's Dylan. And then I'm out. Like, if that big robot showed I'll up, please, Dylan. Take me, good sir. I've been up. <laughs> Honestly, I had the same thought. They were very cavalier towards what was coming at them, and that gave me the like the impression like their death isn't final. Like yeah. these I people just, are so robotic, they're so I cavalier towards point. danger. There's no way their death is final, and I, therefore I, I actually was pretty disconnected from all of the characters from the very beginning. I was connected to them because I thought. Uh, cause I thought, um, like they have just been so good and like succeeded in all their, the missions, like so, so well that they were just cocky. Oh, or just, you went a different sure, direction. You went yeah. to or, he sure. didn't go to cocky. He went to imagination land and made like fucking five free plot <laughs> episodes of what he felt I, I happened. Just it was that messing with the new that. guy. Like, true, true. You know what I mean? Just like when the mission starts, have one of your big tough guys sass off, and then have the leader just shoot him in the head, yeah. and then the new guys like, "Oh shoot, I gotta be all right. I'm, I'm gonna sit up straighter." You know, just like, just see, that's like, rational. Right. That's rational. And like Dylan in his goddamn fairy tale episodes, where they had like all these successful bank guys before they bonded <laughs> together in blood. They're just like no. all about each other now. Like they know everything. Like Jesus. Why Christ, do you think Dylan. they have to make the backups? They're death prone. Like. They die all the time. They're so bad. Well, I didn't job. know about the backups at the time. <laughs> well, let's see. One of the main characters all like, I don't care what happens. I'm just going to take at it until it destroys me. Like, that alone was enough for me to recognize. Like, you probably aren't invincible you in your current pod. body. You're invincible as a concept. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've been playing a lot of Apex Legends lately, and it kind of reminded me of that just because I'm like, I would let my team down and die a lot. Apex <laughs> Legends is any indication of how this would go. It'd be like, guys, we a flag, thing. Like, where's Cody? Half a map away, dead. That's where Cody is. He <laughs> died on the way down every time. So I don't, I don't play Apex Legends that much, but uh, I was definitely really hardcore into Battle Royales when PUBG first came out. And I'm definitely that guy, for some reason, I'm always landing away from my squad. And it's not due to the fact that I don't know how. It's just, like, I think they make bad decisions sometimes, so I just not to participate. <laughs> my buddy sent a picture, which was fucking great. And it's of Robert Downey Jr. from Tropic Thunder, whenever he's all like, I am the squad, or some shit like that. And I was there like, this is fucking Chris right here. And I was like, it's so true. So we started playing Apex the first game. And then I was like, break apart the fuck does that mean and they'd already played it and they're all like no one tell chris how to break apart <laughs> at all this is the only way he'll ever drop with us is because he's fucking forced to drop with us i've definitely had those things where i'll be dropping out of the plane and i'll like ping where we're going and i'm the jump master and then all of a sudden my two teammates are gone and yeah. i'm just like well, i guess i like picked the middle of a field on the edge of the map and they're like no, no we're not playing no, safe not where we <laughs> We'd rather have you be dead. Like, there's, okay. There's, okay, guys. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but there's this YouTuber called Long Beach Griffey, and he just did this. Uh, he just did this video. He does like these little short, like two minute videos where it's just always just him in the video, and he does like these skits. He had one for Apex, and it's like what Apex players sound like. So he's sitting down, and like he just sits down. His controller's like, "All right, let's get this dub, baby. Let's get this dub." And then like all of a sudden, like you're like, "All right, where are we gonna drop? Where are we gonna drop? Let's drop here." No. Fucking pussy! Why you want to go all the way out there? You want to play safe? And then like he's in, like he's he's doing like so many fucking different things. My favorite one where he's like he's like first or there's two of them. The first one he's like I hit him, I hit him. He's one shot, he's one shot, he's one shot, he's one shot. He wasn't one shot. I had my damage set to stacking versus floating, so my calculation was off. I thought I hit him for 500. Okay, and then the next one is he's like. There's one on me, there's one on me, there's one on me, there's three on me, three on me, three, nine on me, 30 on me? I was like, that's so fucking funny, it's so true. It's like there's so one on me, I'm getting shot from everywhere! <laughs> I, uh, oh, I, have, I have lasted less than a minute before. That was pretty, imp when I landed, and I like, landed, hit the ground, I got shot in the head, and I'm like, yep. why do I play this game? Yep. I am not good enough. Yep. I'm never going to be. It's rough sometimes. See, oh. 
here's my point is that the audience doesn't know is that I've relied on Cody for multiple types of games for him telling me the strategy and now I'm learning this through like the grapevine I'm like ah oh, one game kills me there's one game I'm good you. at and it's actually 10 years old <laughs> No, there are two games I 100% have relied on you for strategy for. What's the Can second Can you think one? of the second one? Oh, Orcs, Orcs Must, must die, die, too. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. Fair. That's fair. yeah. Okay. Where you completely changed all of my playing style to match <laughs> with you. And everybody else that you and I both play with, they're all like, well, Cody does this. And I'm like, well, Cody's not always right. And they're like, yeah, but, but Cody does this. And I'm like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> That's funny. I, I win zero percent of arguments since Cody started like playing that game with our joint friends. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about Lucky Thirteen episode. Lucky Thirteen, ladies and gentlemen. That is one of my Visuals favorite really episodes. Good. It was so good. Visuals were really really good. I like that one. I, I, uh, that kind of indicated something that I loved about the whole series was just how much humanity was in each episode. I mean, yeah. for being Love, Death, and Robots, even the episodes that were just fully about robots, they were such, like, human stories. Oh, I love cats that. take over the world. <laughs> the cats, but it was like, the robots are there as robots, but they just act like people. Yeah. And they well, like, rip on thing. each other like people. So, so for I guess for anybody who's obviously, you know, paying attention to the actual screen and not just listening to this, I've got three robots behind me. Kelsey has <laughs> fish story behind her. Uh, Cody has, uh, you said suits, Oops. right? Suits behind yep. you, and then Dylan, I don't remember what yours is called. Shapeshifters. Is Shapeshifters, okay. That was just oh, God, it's such a good one. So, since we're talking about the, the three robots, oh, my God. So, it starts off with me thinking it's just this apocalyptic, like, oh, these robots took over because he looks like all fucking badass. And out of nowhere, it's just like, okay. We're fucking lost, aren't we? And I was like, okay, this is good. I love the little orange robot. He stole that goddamn <laughs> episode. He's so yeah, he fucking funny. Uh, my favorite part is when he's talking to the female robot, and he's like, he's like, yeah, or she's like, where do you come from? He's like, yeah, I come from a long line of baby monitors. Well, there's no more babies around anymore, are there? And he's like, yeah, we were pretty terrible at our job. That was fucking phenomenal. He was cracking me the fuck up. But the, the chick robot won it for me whenever they were dead that they were at the basketball and he's like you just bounce it and he's sitting there holding it. he's like i'm not gonna bounce it man he's like yeah just bounce it and then she's like bounce it you fucking pussy and then just real quiet and she's like please and he's like chill your motherboard i was like it's so fucking good oh my god or like they did the whole fucking xbox or whatever it was it's like look at your granddad and he's like oh, he picks yeah, it up was... it puts it in front of his face he's all like son you don't look well have you been eating right and i was just like this is fucking great oh my god well that's what i mean is like for all of these stories being so weird and putrid they were all super relatable it's oh, just yeah. like you immediately yeah. see like your friends and all of these characters oh, like yeah. so quickly and that's I, yeah. This like the, the dialogue between those characters was so snappy and fun. And and for them to make they, they had one really good Hail Mary in that episode for me, which is the the fucking cat part where he's like, if you stop petting it, it will explode. And he's like, you don't know, is that true? And he looks at her and she's like, the humans did have a game called Exploding Kittens, so I think it checks out. And I was like, that's fucking phenomenal. Yes. Yes. Oh no. my gosh. And then he's like, oh man, what a shame. You're going to die now. <laughs> I was like, this is fucking little robot is cracking me up. Oh man. He was and in terms of like, the show. Every single line, every single line that was upper, ut uttered by the triangular female robot, like that big triangle with the eyeball that moved back and up, back and forth. Every single line, my husband died laughing she and cody funny. knows my husband cody can you confirm that that is exactly my husband's kind of humor like every single line out of the female robot's mouth oh, yep she, that is yep. very true she was awesome it was <laughs> just so monotone just like so monotone self-deprecating like <laughs> yeah. hill like uh, human deprecating humor god it was so when funny she took every the single picture. line she uttered my husband died when she took the picture of the dead cheerleader against the wall, and she's just all like, you look fabulous, girl. Say terabyte. And I was just like, that was fucking phenomenal. Oh, my God. Yes, absolutely. That's also, like, in positioning, I'm looking at the list right now, and it's like, Sunny's Edge, you know, murder, murder monsters. The Witness, weird accidentally killing someone in the psychedelic nightmare orgy. And then right in the middle of that, cute robots make crack wise i'm like this is an amazing series of stuff to fit together 
<laughs> yeah. to break up the monotony. You know, there's never one tone. Each episode, you're like, I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe right now. Yeah. Like, I got to Ice Age, and I'm like, I feel like this is going to be fun, but they might also get killed. I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> I honestly feel like that was my favorite part of every single episode is at the end of it, my husband and I would be sitting there and one of us would go, huh, <laughs> every single time. Because each episode was so bizarre. It would set one of us off into a, huh, kind of place. That was actually my second uh, favorite episode. I liked Ice Age a lot. That one was really fucking good. That was Ice so Age. good. It reminded me of Men in Black. I was just like, oh, it's just Men in Black. It's like Men <laughs> in Black. And I'm also yeah. like, yeah, I, can see it. I live in a place with a freezer like that. <laughs> <laughs> Try oh, a, I, I one time was given the job of cleaning out a refrigerator in a frat house that had been untouched for like 15 years. I mean, I was pulling things out with the label 90s on them, and I'm like, yeah. and then we threw that refrigerator out, and I'm like, I think there's a civilization in this refrigerator, Probably. because I saw it growing. Probably. I think it's sentient. I don't think it wants to die. Alright, so, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about our, the one episodes that gave us the biggest chill, like, you wise like, uh, like, uh, let's say, like, a. He's on it. Like a mind blown. There he goes. He's got it. <clears throat> um, a mind blown? I don't mean. Yeah, it can't be your favorite. I think, I think mine was uh, Sunny's Edge. Yeah, I mean, I think I'd have to go with that one as well. Cause like I said, Just because I was so... Me. Everything surprised me about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like That's really the see, only one. On the opposite, 0% of that surprised me. From the very beginning, I'm like... This is not what it seems. She is not what she seems. The monster is not what they seem. Like, from the very beginning, I was like, and all of this is suspect. And when the girl showed up in the cute dress and she was so perfect and she was so ready to be not taken by a man, but taken by a woman because that's who she was attracted to. I'm like, you are suspicious as fuck and I don't believe you at all. And well, I so, knew that was going like, to happen. I just came didn't out, know that I'm she like, was actually And don't thing. trust you and don't trust you and totally believe that was where that was episode was going. Like, 0% of that surprised me. Well, see, the, I, the reason why... I'm all about... The reason I'm why... all about love stories. So, like, when they were, like, when she was, like, the mob boss's wife, you know, and then they were, uh -huh. they were like, you know, getting all romantic. I'm like, yay, they're gonna find love together. It makes me so happy. Look, she's like young and beautiful and idealistic, and the other one's hard and and been wrecked by life. But together, they can form one heart. And it's just like, no, I stabbed her in the head. I'm like, no, but the love story. That's great, because that right there is like, I wish we could have had a camera in my house and in Cody's house when we were both watching this episode, because that's his reaction when she showed up in there and they start talking. My reaction straight was. They about to fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, was, that was exactly what I asked. Like, they about to fuck. So I knew there was something suspect. I heard the only reason why I disliked that episode going back and watching now was there's nothing wrong with the episode. The episode's fucking phenomenal. The way the monster actually fucking, like, wins that battle was fucking dope as shit, too. Because you thought she was fucking done. Oh, yeah. But well, like, the rape the element guy. behind that was amazing. Like, the the rape piece of that and then the, like, yeah. the personal yeah. takeover exactly. as a result of the rape response yeah, was that like was awesome. that is exactly how a rape victim would respond if they had the opportunity like it was it was amazing yeah, from was that cool. perspective for them to like zoom in on a certain things to actually show like that actually being what was going on was pretty fucking cool yeah. uh, but yeah. one of the things about the episode that like i'm so fucking mad at myself because it, it totally tells itself from the beginning <clears throat> every time that dude gets hit or something like that he's he's like you motherfuckers get your shit together da -da 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 -da, all this other shit she never once looked up. She never once made a movement. So that right there should have been my big red flag of she is physically yeah. not in her body right now. Like, that is not I her actual body. <clears throat> I noticed that while I was watching it, that she wasn't moving during the fight. And I was like, oh, she's stoic and concentrated, you know? And then it was like, oh, she's not there anymore. Yeah. I'm stupid. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. Well, they got yeah. <laughs> well, mine that blew my mind the most would definitely be on the uh, the ocular lift. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it's like, I, I thought it, cause I thought it was going to go. That was space travel one, Kelsey. 
where the tanks, the, oh, the, the chambers fuck up. God, that was so cool. Yeah, that was really. Yeah, cool. like I thought it was gonna be like go this one way, and then all of a sudden, like when they tried to uh, wake up the other crew member, the woman, and she's like, "That's not yada yada. Can't you see this?" It's like, what the fuck is going on well, here? At that point, at that point, I was like, the, the legitimately the moment the chick walked in and took her helmet off, and she's like, "Oh my god, I can't believe it's you." And she starts talking about this malfunction that sent them this crazy distance. I was like, well, this is absolute bullshit, like, automatically. Like, yeah. I don't believe a fucking word of this. If I meet you on Earth and then you fucking leave and you're, like, fucking a billion mi- light years away from me, there is a fucking 0% <laughs> chance, regardless of a malfunction, I will ever fucking see you again. Zero. Yeah. I see, automatically see, was like, this I, I is thought, bullshit. See, off the, off the radar. I was like, I, I don't believe this at all. bring him to him because I thought she was obsessed with him. I didn't know it was a fucking planet-sized alien entity that had absorbed their ship and, like, I didn't know what the main the thing was going to be. I just knew that she was not real. That <laughs> was my, my thought was like maybe his crew had died and his tank fucked up and he was like having some sickness where he thought this shit was going on that wasn't actually happening. Yeah. That's what I thought was happening. And then like they started fucking and all this other stuff and I was like, I'd, somewhere in my mind, I, was, I just pictured this dude like fucking like a watermelon or something. I didn't know what was happening, but in his head, this is what's happening. In real, in reality, that's not what was going on. Now that see, we see my- what actually happened, I wonder. I mean, did they actually fuck? Cause that's if I woke up and I looked like him. First off, because he looked like ass, obviously. If I woke up He'd and I looked like him, and I knew that I had fucked that. I would just kill myself at that point. Like, go ahead, rip my arm off, whatever, throw myself in space, some shit. Because, goddamn, man, when that thing came walking through that door, I was like, bro, I don't even I know mean, what to get tested for at this point. Like, that is game, set, and match. That is done. That's done. That's, that's the end. I mean, the realization that you're having is that you have just had sex with a spider. One. And the second, I think the valuable thing that me, Cody... Dylan and the audience are all learning right now is that Chris's suspicion game is exactly on point. The rest of ours are all distracted. Like Cody's is full on distracted by love. Dylan's is distracted by tits. Mine is distracted by like, oh, what? where's the story going? And Chris is full on like, nah, Did all you of this tits? is just <laughs> What? <laughs> Womanizer, womanizer, womanizer. That's not, that's, that's not how it happened to him, but yeah, I, I mean, like, pretty yeah, much. Yeah. Dylan just got thrown under the bus on this one. Yeah. I seem like a like a fanciful romantic. Dylan, you're just like gross now, apparently. Yeah, yeah that that was basically what Kelsey said. Chris is the mastermind. I love the story and plot, so I get roped up in that. Cody's a hopeless romantic, so he gets roped up in a love story. Dylan's just the fucking pervert over here, staring at tits every time they're on the screen. It's like, man, dude. Oh, uh, no, you know what's funny about that one, though? So I, I thought he was dead. I was close, but I was just like, oh, she's an angel or whatever, and this is like, she's death. Oh, she's an angel, all right. That's for sure, dude. Well, kind of. I mean, maybe that's what you You go to a creepy space station with a spider that's to be <laughs> the angel of it. death and STDs. That's for But I was like here. sitting in the parking lot of work watching that one, like finishing it, and then it's like sexy, and I'm like, gotta pretend like not watching this. Like, wait, <laughs> it's like, nope, they're still going. Like, and they're still going. Like, that's could you be great. done, please? Like, I'm that's trying great. to actually watch the story. I get it. <laughs> That's great. The best part for me, though, is like when she started crying and she's all like, I care for every lost soul that comes here. I literally was like, uh, I do not want to see what she fucking looks like, man. I was like, no, I don't want to see this. He stuck his dick in it. I don't want to see it. No, please, God. And then it shows him and he's like all old and raggedy and shit. And I was like, oh, my God. No. And like I started looking around the ship and it looks like the whole it looked like the flood from fucking Halo and I'm like I do not want to see what is about to come through that fucking door and it's like this fucking mutant alien spider thing and I'm like bro you fucked that though like I would have loved to have been one of the characters in the show because that would have been my actual reaction I would be like but you fucked that though dude like oh my god you poured champagne on her and licked it off man what were you actually licking dude oh Ah! Oh, I would lost and my that mind. right there is why he got put back to sleep, and they just get reset on that conversation. <laughs> it's better but, not uh, to know. Just don't like, you think I agree. That, like 
I the the animated like the animators did a great job because when she was walking out when the, that female spider was walking out of the shadows and she looked like a female for a good yeah, maybe three they steps made the front of her and then all of a sudden was like here's eight eyes and my back end which is definitely not feminine human was like it's, oh. it's very dark souls where you see an enemy and you're like you can and then they turn around and you're like yeah no <laughs> kill it kill the fire <laughs> oh man I was, I was oh, like, Quay-lag. fuck that nonsense. Ugh. Reminded me of Arachne a little bit. <sighs> oh, oh, man. Top on. Dylan, Dylan, Dylan. Oh. <sighs> what Arachne's a fucking spider with a fucking female upper body. I know, Dylan. I just, I'm trying to vision you in that spot, and I just feel like you would be like, you know what, fuck it. I accept this. This is great. Let's fuck, you know? I would rather live with that spider, though. Like, not... Not like in a way that I like want to have sex with that spider because I find them terrifying. But I'm like, I kind of want to see what this alien's like. Like, what do you do? Yeah, dude, on she's just fucking. Time she's just fucking sucking me station. off while I'm asleep for sure. Ease, ease. See, no, here's my I'm good. favorite part: is I know his wife, and she will 100% give him shit for this later. Be like, you fucking want to fuck a spider? Like, <laughs> no, she knows I don't because I can't kill spiders. Oh man. Honestly, I want to talk about Zima Blue. Like, that whole episode was a truly amazing experience in the conversation about art, the conversation about robotics, the conversation about meaning and purpose, and I thought that episode was particularly amazing. I'm glad you thought that, because to me that was fucking boring. For this kind of, like... <laughs> I don't know, I want to say, like, avant-garde, like, high-thought stuff. I'm just like, philosophize at me. Yeah, I did. I, I, did, like the, I did like the ending. Yeah, the ending was cool, for just sure. Because, just because, it's like, this thing's lived for all this time, and it's finally just gone back to what it knows, what it enjoys. I was like, well, oh, that's a cool ending. But the whole like rest of it that is... simplicity, you know? It's like, it's just... in a way, when he was that simple machine, it's like, kind of a perfect life depending on how you look at it like he was he did one thing perfectly and that was his whole existence and then for the rest of it it was spent trying to rationalize everything as mm -hmm. one big blue color and then at the end he's just like well i can do that again by becoming what i was before and it's like it's kind of an interesting way of like looking at like this obsession with like finding yeah. truth and trying to get more and more complicated with it right. and bigger and more grandiose uh, and in the end you just end up being like oh well I also I thought it's it just was just a blue tile yeah, yeah I also mean, thought it was cool the way he just like just disintegrated in the water and just slowly like yeah. started like falling apart well and what I loved about that was that, super cool I love the audience for that and that they didn't get it like where they're like watching this thing just like fall apart and they're like this isn't a giant oh, blue planet, dying. and I'm like, because they're just he's obsessed dying. with the spectacle of him doing these amazing yes. things, and he became like, oh, look, he's doing art. I'm like, none of this means anything to any of you guys. No. Like, unless you were a pool cleaner, <laughs> robot, that's lived forever, none of this means a thing. Yeah, he's the... making pieces of art that are famous because he has become it a character. Showed... No, it showed how easily humans are obsessed with just one thing that a yeah. celebrity or yes. someone like up there in status. As soon as they do one thing, it shows just how us humans are just so like obsessed over it. How like yeah, they would do anything for pay any amounts of money to see it, and I how the way they all looked, they were so like they all looked like people from the Capitol from Hunger Games. You know, they're like the Space <laughs> Age absolute people and like painting planets blue and it's like oh he's Zima this is Zima blue and I'm like he does kind of remind me of Andy Warhol though a little bit and people liking Andy Warhol yeah I hate Andy Warhol I mean I will say he's no Bob Ross though but <laughs> He's no Bob Ross. But one point that's like super valuable that um, Cody brought up is I don't know if you, did any of you act other than me and Cody because Cody I like I remember you there with me so I know you were there. Did any of you actually see the Hunger Games in theaters? I saw the first one. Okay. It. Because well, what was them, really I cool, I think about the second and third and fourth one was that in the second, third, and fourth one in the previews. For the movie, they were like having, having like makeup, like super 
ads and they were like be like the people in the capital and then the whole like movie was about how the people in the capital were like horribly like wrong about everything in life and i was like i understand that you were taking this opportunity to promote promote your makeup but do you realize how this may not have been the most appropriate opportunity to do that it would kind of be like after a significant shooting of people like a major mass shooting being like fyi we were the ones who made the bullet casings and didn't they work very well like same level of nonsense was going on in the advertisements for this movie is that they're like look they look pretty like i think Uh, i think you missed them never mind yeah exactly it's cool (laughs) you're you missed the point. You're definitely wrong. We don't know how to tell you you're wrong. And we're just going to let you do what you're doing because at this point, it's too uncomfortable for, for us to tell you that you're wrong. Yeah, we're all just going to kind of squirm a little bit like, <laughs> sorry, Candace. I'm dying for nothing here, bud. <laughs> because literally nobody gets it. And I kind of felt like this. there was the same underlying tone with some of Zima Blue for exactly what we're bringing up. The fact that people are still watching his final performance looking for a whole blue pan- planet or a whole blue galaxy or a whole yeah. blue thing. I felt like that same kind of feeling was there. And the feeling that was there when I watched the Hunger Games like previews was accidental the feeling that was there when i watched zima blue was intentional and i thought yeah. it was super cool yeah it was it was a I clever way of depicting like celebrity it. artists for sure and like yeah the idea that meaning is universal for any of these things that like this artist paint this thing and then you're like oh it's amazing i understand it i'm like, it's not really how this stuff works like you don't know why he did this that it's not it's meant to be ambiguous but at the same time it's like there is a way to misinterpret art. Not every way of reading is probably right. Yeah. Maybe that's an unpopular opinion, but whatever. <clears throat> yeah, the moment she started yeah, describing I'll... the entire story in the car, I was like, I'm so ready for this episode to be over with already. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I like, defi- yeah. And the art in that one like was my favorite. I loved the way that looked. It was so cool. Because it's just a style you don't see that often. It's like not anime and also not just like american animation you know it's like right. neither one of those and i'm like oh that's really cool that it has just like a different feel and the proportions of the character were very different yeah so it um, felt like a comic strip not a comic book but a comic it was strip. very two-dimensional and that was even yeah. like everyone was in planes like flat planes like the characters yeah. were mm-hmm. um and everything kind of looked like shots from a comic book you know it was like yeah, Things moved a little bit, but not really. They were very like static scenes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Dylan, I interrupted you. Where were you going? Uh, I was just gonna say uh, I was gonna bring up one more episode for us to talk about, but we can wait till you're done with this one. You, you can go. I'll on. talk forever if yeah. you don't stop uh, me. It's bad. Yeah, uh, really bad. The Secret War. That oh one I didn't. I didn't think that was all that that, that good, honestly. Uh, the hell's wrong with you? Go back and watch that again, you monster. It, 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 I would say that's one of those stories that was like, it started, and I'm like, okay, I know the whole story, but yeah. that does not mean they did a bad job. No, I'm not I saying that the episode was... was bad. I just, I, I was just like, eh. I, I could have done with or without it. I, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it this way, though. I will say this. I think for a show that I really think the first episode was like a knock out of the park, like get you addicted to the show, I definitely don't think that should have been the last episode. I don't think that was good enough to be the last episode. Wow, I had a, I have to jump in because I had a totally different experience. The first episode, I knew what was coming the whole way through. The last episode, I had no idea what was coming. Like when they, when these actual enemies turned out to be these alien monsters, and then the actual last battle turned out to be this intentional battle with like as many of these things as they could do. I anticipated none of that. And to be totally clear, I'm not the normal audience for war games, for war stories, for the end of like war things. And so it's possible you guys have been targeted where, for this information and this type of normal storytelling where I have not. But other than that, like, I thought this was an amazing story that I didn't see coming. I mean, I did. That's why I didn't it, like it. it. My... I agree with Chris. It, 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 compared to the first episode and all the others, it just it didn't, it, it didn't bring a proper ending to the series. It was I remember really... thinking about the whole series today, and I was like, what was the last episode? Because I was trying to think about the bookends, right? I was like, I know the first episode, that one stuck with me. And I was like, is the last episode The Secret War? And I was kind of thinking to myself, I'm like, it doesn't seem like right. But 
Because I agree, it was, to me, the most obvious narrative. And it's like, you have an old guy and a young kid. The young kid's inexperienced. He gets saved. He seems yeah. nervous. Uh, and then the there's this old guy, and I'm like, the old guy's gonna die. Yeah. He's got dead guy written all over him. And they're like, <laughs> freezing in Soviet Russia. I'm like, what's he gonna have a happy end? Yeah. Happy ending in Russia ever. It's like, no, they're going to die. They're definitely going to die except for the kid. They're going to get away because like, that's what happened. Like, as, as that guy started making his like presence on the screen, I, all I could fucking hear out to me was like, fucking, this is 300. Here we go. This is fucking <laughs> 300. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's very that. <laughs> yep. So I, hey, I, exactly I own that happen. movie in DVD and I watch it on my 4K TV and I'm like, this looks like shit, but I love the story. Good lord. Um, but I, I just, I thought that the cinematography, I don't know if you call it that when it's totally animated, but I thought that it looked beautiful, especially like yeah. the little interlude with him playing that song and then getting stopped and then that song playing again at the end. Yeah. I thought the last battle was shot very beautifully and it was cliche, but I thought it was well done cliche, so I'm not going to hate it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, no, yeah. They, they I were doing like, that thing, and they, they did that thing well. I guess to kind of touch on it a little bit more, I wasn't necessarily talking about plot, Kelsey. My main point of that is, like, regardless whether the first episode caught me off guard or not, it was like, I think the first episode did a very good job of getting you ready for the rest of the season. Because it and went from, like, episode. here we are to, like, here's a little bit of action. Here's a little bit of stuff that you're probably not going to be ready for solely for the fact that it's, like, we've never done something like this before. So now you got her mind-melding with this fucking, like, raptor beast and shit like this. And then all of a sudden, like, you're just God, watching this. And so all of a sudden, cool. it's just, bam, out of nowhere. In intense, insane violence. Bam, out of nowhere. Fucking nudity. Bam, all this fucking cuss. I mean, the dude got called, like, a dick, a cunt, an asshole, like, within the first, like, five seconds of the goddamn episode. Like, it set mm -hmm. the tone for, like, this is what the rest of the episodes are going to be like. So at that point, that tone has been set. And now we've got this fucking father-son war story. And it just wasn't, like, as climactic as I felt it could have been for the end of that season. I would have much rather have seen something like... Dylan's favorite episode would have been a good one. Our the farmer episode oh, would have yeah. been another good ender for me, in my opinion. What, like in your in your opinion of these eighteen episodes that we had, each one of you, like Chris, Dylan, Cody, I want to hear what would have been your choice for the very last episode. What would have been your bookend if you could have chosen? Zima Blue, Zima Blue would have been the way I would have ended it. Like the thought really. Oh boy, the the thoughtful slow, the because it, it was the most cerebral. I thought it was the smartest one. Um, I thought it was the mm. one that above all of the other ones, like to me overall, the show had a theme of humanity in all of these things. It was about humanity and how that affects people and the different shapes that it can take, even in outlandish places. Um, but that one to me was the most thought provoking in a way that wasn't like this is tough. So. I think shows like this can be have the appearance of being like very intellectual like oh look it's a metaphor because mm -hmm. it's not clear and I'm like being confusing is not making a point like you can be artistic and va and vapid and mean nothing like and you can also have something that looks dumb and has a good point to me Zima Blue had the strongest like thesis that was relevant to the way we view other things like, everything else, there was kind of, like, a fable to the story. Like, that's why I liked Suits, because it was about community and, like, family existing, even in these extremely weird places. I felt the same way about, um, I don't want to call it dog soldiers, because that was what they were called. Shapeshifters is what they were called. Shapeshifters, where it was, like, a very human story about the way soldiers mm -hmm. relate and what war is like, you know? And I was like, it doesn't matter. Those could be anything, but that's the story. Um so to me, the one that had the best thesis, the best idea was Zima Blue, so I would have put it at the end. Dylan, right, what would you next? put at the end? I was going to take this next, but uh, I would ha I would go with Good Hunting because the because the artwork of it was stunning. The the story behind it was stunt was just amazing. Um, the only reason shapeshifters is my favorite is because i'm a big like vampire werewolf fan and that was about werewolves so i was a bit biased on that but and it just showed how love can transcend beyond 
physical. Like, she loved hunting. She loved being herself. She loved being the, the predator. And she had all that taken away from her as magic vanished. And the mechanic loved his learn to love being a mechanic being with machines fixing them creating them and then when they came together as one she needed him to help her come back to what she loved more and he needed her to give him that ultimate challenge to see can i do this i also think like that's totally true and i think that like i'm like almost forgetting that i said see him a blue now because i think you're actually right but something I was going to say when we talked about Good or I also liked their relationship because it wasn't sexual. And she was like, at the yeah. beginning, she was presented as a seductress. Like, that was, like, what she was falsely accused as. And I liked that it seemed like they loved each other, but it just wasn't that relationship. He just, yeah. they loved each other for who they were. And, and she never, never used that in the iconic. context of their relationship. She never intentionally went like, if I seduce you or I am seductive to you, you'll do more for me. Right. It was always like, I'll present myself completely honestly to you and I will be honest with you. Yeah. And your desire for me to continue being who I am and you to continue being all that you can be to Together, those things will push us into a whole new state of being where you will help me be all that I can be. And that Which was is true. totally different than seducing him into it. Yeah, and that was like, even when he was a kid and she was like naked and kind of pointed out like, I think you are actually attracted. She wasn't trying to be seductive. Like, yeah. she, that was just how she looked. Like, she wasn't yeah. trying to like use feminine wiles. She's just like, uh, I turn into a wolf, so when I turn back, I'm not wearing a shirt. Fox. Yeah, okay, it was a fox. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's a really important conversation around accidental feminine Sorry, sexuality, yeah. around the whole, like, the, the whip, like women's bodies. And I apologize if this is an overly political statement, Chris. Feel free to, like, chew me out here. But women's bodies have been so overly sexualized, even when accidental nudity occurs. Like, there's a feeling of guilt on both parties, either both the one that has exposed the nudity and the one who's seen the nudity, even though there was no intentional sexualization of that particular experience. And the the reality of, like, hey, women are over-sexualized and you may have seen me naked, but that doesn't mean you're, like, we're, we have a sexual relationship. Well, yeah. It's a super important reality to exist in the context of this episode. And that was totally true for, like, they had a conversation where she, like, was just, like, unashamedly nude, and he was not, like, I'm staring at you now. It's just, like, well, we're talking, and this is, like, a No, yeah, he was moment. having a conversation, yeah. and, yeah. like, and, and, how, and how after seeing his dad cut the mother's head off, you know, not giving her up, realizing, you know, they are not these, at least the daughter was not this evil spirit seducing these men. Like she explained to him, yeah. we have no choice. When men fall for us, we hear them every night when they cry for us. We have to go to them to stop it. It's like them keeping themselves from going insane. And Good Hunting just had so much to it. And I think it would have been a killer end episode. Uh, final episode. Way yeah, better than the Secret War. Um, um, Secret I'm, War. I'm, I'm Secret War. I regret my answer is Zima now. <laughs> yeah, Secret War should have been the second episode, so that way we get the good one and they get the bad one, and then have all the rest good, and then end with perfection. <laughs> well, I say perfection, but you know. Chris, what would you have said? What would you have picked as your final episode? I really wish Brandon was on here because I'm pretty sure he said Secret War was his favorite episode. So, I would have loved to defend his episode, but uh, I could be wrong. I, I remember him talking about Secret War. Um, yeah, honestly, no, he did. He did. He, he probably said Secret War was his favorite episode in Slack. I remember the, it. The, the best part about this, and I've, I've pointed this out on plenty of different shows, is the fact that they can't see me. So I've just been smiling over here the entire time, pretty much, because I would have went with yogurt easily. That would have been. Oh, oh, man. Man. oh. It leaves. It leaves at the end. Happy, meaningless episode. No, no, no it leaves at you? the end, and everything's all a mystery. It's all like, will they ever come back? Like, it just leaves everything up to your imagination. Oh, it's like the worst sense. view of humanity. It's uh, just, the, it's, it's so presenting great. us at our worst. It's so great. It's so great. 
Uh, it's presenting no. us as our most servitude. Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like, hey, when other people can make the decisions for us, we can just sit back and let other people make the decisions for us. I think when what we now know is that Chris does not believe in the human spirit. Oh, I don't. I do not. No, that is that is that has been talked about multiple times. I do not. I have given up on humanity a long fucking time ago. Oh man. To, to be honest, I have given up on humanity as well. But Chris, screw you. But Chris has forbidden me ever, ever to speak about what I think about humanity right now. He has forbidden me from ever speaking about it. The internet is not ready for that, and the Death Bunny channel <laughs> would not survive. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if I had to pick like an actual like hardcore episode, I mean, I do think Yogurt One would be a funny way to end it. To where like mm -hmm. literally Secret War, I it would have been a show, fun way to end it. Yeah. I, I left the show of like, all right, cool, I guess. All right, I, I wasn't I wasn't taken aback by anything. Like it wasn't funny, it wasn't like dramatic, it wasn't like awesome. I just I was like, this episode exists. I mean, uh, that and Zima Blue were too too close together for me. Maybe I was still oh, maybe no. I was still feeling yes. the residual fucking shock of Zima Blue, where I was like, because watching Zima Blue. When they did the fucking blue shit on the paintings, and they're like, and then it just kept showing up, and I was like, "Fuck, they're gonna go over uh, so many different paintings until it's one. nothing but fucking blue." Oh my god! <laughs> oh, <laughs> that blue is art. oh my god! That's totally yogurt. what happens. You see that happen with like pieces of art that no one understands, but they're like songs and crap that are just like, "We're just gonna play this everywhere." And just I was play like, it everywhere. Like, Really guys. Well, I got the message behind it. It was very easy to pick that up. I was just, oh, no, I, I was just that was like, really clever. please, for the love of God, let this be a five-minute episode, and it wasn't. And I was like, son of a bitch. No, no. it needed to be like an hour. I would watch it. I got, I would not. Episode. That would have easily made me go. Well, we are definitely reviewing something else on fucking Friday. <laughs> That's for fucking sure. I have not sit through this goddamn episode. That didn't happen in that, or I'm just gonna bullshit my way through it. Be like, ah, no, that episode was fucking great. Loved it. Mm-hmm. Blue, yeah, yeah. Blue was there. <laughs> oh, he was the fucking pull thing at the end. Yeah, that was crazy. Oh my god. No, no, I was not All a fan right, of so. Blue. <laughs> I have a question. No. If you could have picked one episode to remove from the series, what Zima would it Blue. have been? Because for me, without question, it would have been the dump. Like oh, that whole episode. No! What? No, the the dump was amazing. Was oh, the dump was so good. I no. Like oh, my balls. <laughs> I'm going my balls. Fucking oh. cracked up when he said that. I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> The dump was so good. Oh my I God. liked the dump for it being. It, I love that it looked like DreamWorks. Yeah. And it was just like a yeah. crazy old man with an alive dump. And it's like it comes I like the story wife. of Up. I like his girlfriend. She looked. She See, that's what you guys need bro. to realize. You guys missed the secret <laughs> message of that episode, though. That's what, what? happened. Really? That's what happened when the guy from Up's house finally came down and it just shattered. That's him. That's that's his life now. Well, that's because it's the same character. It's yeah, like, you gotta exactly. leave. You have... yeah. Man, he's like, are you, are you really sure about that? Like, when he calls that guy, that guy relevant, I have like... a giant dump dog that will eat you. Whenever he, called yeah. the, whenever he called the name, I was like, yeah, this dude's dead. <laughs> like, I knew that was happening. I was like, that, that, this dude's dead. Like, that's happening. <laughs> and then they I started showing the story. I just, and, yeah, I was like, yeah. This I liked is... that it was a different take on, like, becoming irrelevant in a modern age where it's like, oh, you have to learn. On, on this whimsical adventure, I'm like, or you know what? You don't have to change. You can let the world just, like, wreck itself thought, on you. See, Cody, I had the opposite reaction. I thought it was an unnecessary story of a gross old man. In a gross old like the he little, is. like he referred to the dump as an it like he talked about a little bit of how the dump had this personality I'm like 100 percent the dump is alive the dump cares about him and nobody else and is gonna kill this old government person 100 percent like I called it from the first like minute we were into the episode and so I wasn't impressed when it happened and I wasn't interested when it happened zero percent impressed I was just like this is being a gross white person in an old like a dumpy place like this is terrible. <laughs> This is this is awful. Oh, but who's who's there to judge that? Why do you get to decide what's gross? 
Why, why is that gross? Are you the yardstick of humanity over here? I mean, I do. What constitutes a good life? I do have He's to say this, though. Like, I mean, I... He lives alone. He has a dog. He just wants to be left alone. I grew up poor. There's no fans of what's about that. I've lived in my fair share of trailers, and I know Dylan, Dylan also is uh, in the same boat on that one. Let me tell you something, though. I would not be able to live in a dump. That just wouldn't happen. Like, the fucking <laughs> smell alone would be enough for me to be like, nah, man. Like, no. Mm, no, dude. When I get man. dirt in my hair, I have to take, like, three showers. Imagine you just that. waste water. You just waste water. Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, my Lord. Uh. I think I could live in a dump. I, I, I like scrounging through garbage. I'm a trash Cody, person. I have known you long enough that without a spouse, you would 100% live in a dump. Like, you yeah, would be fine I did. with that reality. I didn't, when I wasn't married, my lifestyle was not super great. <laughs> like, I mean, it kind of was, but it was not balanced. <laughs> Like, dear viewers, the reason you're currently looking at Cody, he looks like a presentable human being and his hair is washed, is 100% because he has a wife. <laughs> like, that is the only thing you can account that to. Oh my gosh. Uh, I mean, I wasn't playing. I've known him for 10 years, 8 years, whatever. <laughs> just, just keep adding years to the time Somewhere you know in there, I've known him for enough years for my opinion to be valid on this particular point. <laughs> All right, Kelsey. All right. What's your what's your episode that you would throw away? Oh, the dump. I already said. That. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. shit. I completely forgot. That's how we got to the dump. What's okay, the rest of your opinions? Well, Dylan said Zima Blue. Yep. Cody? Dylan's wrong. Zima Blue's great. I'm mad. <laughs> Zima Blue's garbage. Oh. The only thing I liked about it was the end. All right, Cody or like Chris has got to give me an answer to this question. I mean, honestly, before before we get to that part, alternate history would have been another good one to end on too, in my opinion. Like that would have been like a way for like to. Just, that would have been, really been a fun ending. Yeah, that would have been really I fun honestly ending. don't think it would have been appropriate to end on one of the lighthearted episodes. It seemed like they did a pretty good job of like alternating. Like this is really dark and makes you question your humanity. This is really fun and funny and ha ha. This is really dark. So they did a good job of like alternating those, and I don't think it would have been appropriate to end the series on one of the lighthearted ones. Well, I'll say this then. Fish Knight could easily get the fucking boot. That guy. <laughs> no, I agree with you. Like, I think that was another one that could have gone easily. I terrible. disagree. I liked. I liked Fish Knight. That, that episode well, was Fish terrible. Knight's behind me. So, Cody, yeah. if you don't know that, Fish Knight's behind me right now, and I, I really thought, liked it. I thought it. that one was visually really stunning, and also kind yeah. of just like a very simple. An interesting way to talk about distraction. I was like, and, I just want this fucking family to die. Like, so we can move <laughs> to the next episode. Is this, can we speed this up, please? Can they die of fucking starvation or dehydration or coyotes just, or something? And all of a sudden it's like, oh, look, there's neon fish. And it's all the fish ghosts from who used to live here in the ocean. Da, 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 da. Let's go out and fucking play with them. And I was like, I mean, what did you smoke? What is happening? Just die already. <laughs> What's the next super episode? Important for the viewers to know, Chris wasn't watching this on a deadline. Like, this is what Chris experiences when he watches TV with no deadline. Like, no, you're this boring was a deadline. me, go fucking die. This was a deadline. This whole the fucking season was a deadline. It was like, you guys, it was basically like, all right, I'll release a topic for the review show. And then literally went from my phone for like four hours. <laughs> Pulled up my phone, and the review show was decided that it was going to be this show. Like, there was 48 messages that pretty much was like, this is the show. And I was like, well, I guess I better start watching it. I got, like, fucking four days. Let's go. So, this shit was the crunch time. It's 18 episodes are 10 minutes long. Oh, like, for sure. No it's not like it here. took forever. For sure. All right, so, uh, Cody. Uh, I'm with, clicking uh, through right it, now. and I feel bad saying this. Because, like, I like all the oh, weird... Oh. Thought provoking, made no, no sense ones right? like Zima Blue in the fish tank. I could have done without Blind Spot. I thought it was the weakest. It was cool, but it was just like, yeah, okay. I don't either. That Which one is one. Blind Spot? That's I'm the trying fucking to remember. Robot. The robot, the robot guys. Thieves. Yeah, the robot. Oh, was, yeah, no, I yeah. agree. That yeah. would have been easily in my top three to get rid of Blind yeah. Spot 100%. Yeah, Blind Spot sucked, for sure. For sure. I was clicking through all the rest of them, and in good conscience, I could say, "Oh, yogurt." Wait, no, changing my answer. Get rid of yogurt. Yogurt. Whoa, ho, ho. Sorry. Let's calm down. Sorry. Yo yogurt. I chose. Hot garbage. I chose not to go Zima Blue. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. And now you hit me with yogurt. That's fucked up. Oh, yogurt was so good. It was so, <laughs> so dumb. I don't care about it. Uh, like, 
I just love the <laughs> we want Ohio. That shit was so good. It was so I live in a people make fun of, whatever. It's just full of normal people. Everywhere's full of I mean, normal people. What happened to you, Cody? What did yogurt do to you as a child? That's a, okay, you got so something against thing. yogurt. You just can't Cody actually actually do do yogurt. kind of have like a persistent to hate the concept of yogurt. I actually oh love yogurt. Oh my god. Yogurt. But okay, so check this out. And this is me because George Carlin is dead. But I really don't like George Carlin. And here's my reason it's humor that's laughing at people from the position of being smarter than people. So. To me, all of George Carlin's humor is, I'm going to make jokes at the expense of stupid people, and the audience is all the smart people making fun of the dumb people. You know what I mean? That's the feeling I get off of yogurt, is, oh, look, we made yogurt. We're so clever. We can make this joke about how people need to be commanded by yogurt. And all the people watching it are like, ha, 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 I'm smarter than normal people. And I'm like, it's mean-spirited. Good lord. Uh, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. I was like, this episode is fucking phenomenal. Like, it was so uh, okay. Okay, so I got I got one more thing for us. Uh, everyone who has Netflix and the episodes pulled up, take it down. Uh, I know you don't, Kelsey, because you have trouble finding it. Uh, so, just you get one guess, all three of y'all. I have it up, so I know which so I know which ones. Which episode? Do y'all, do, can y'all guess is the longest? Oh, shoot. I was just looking at this. Uh, yeah, nah, don't pull it up. Don't pull it up. Because uh, I actually thought about that. It, my guess is it's a, is it a tie between Secret War and uh, Sonny's Secret? I think it's one of those two. I know Secret War was like 16 fucking minutes. I know that. It felt much, like it went I, forever. I, I know that there was another one. I feel like Sonny's really Edge had to be too. the be- like the longest one. All right. Well, we know no. Kelsey's answer. Mm. Well, actually, did we ever get the one that Chris would remove? Did yeah. we ever figure that out? Yeah, I already said that already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Chris, which one do you think is the longest? You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, fucking <sighs> Suits was really fucking long. You know what was more important? Was Witness really was fucking, fucking unnecessarily long. long. Oh, but no! But it wasn't that long, though. But I think, no, I, think... I hated that one. I'm gonna have I to go hated suits, that one. Man. I'm going to have to go Suits. I think this, I think Suits was was longer than Secret War. I remember. I know for a fact Secret War is 60 minutes. I know that because it was very painful to sit through that for 60 yeah. minutes. All right, so right, Cody, you have, you have to come up. You have to come with a final decision. I'm going. I'm. I'm agreeing with Kelsey. I think it's uh, <laughs> secret was the longest. The, you the witness. All right, Sony's so, Edge. So Sunny's Edge. Right. Oh, Sunny's Edge. So pretty much all of y'all are right, but wrong. Uh, it's a three-way tie between Sunny's Edge, Suits, and Good Hunting. Well, then we're not wrong. Oh, we're Good right. Hunting. So, yeah, good Hunting. I, was I, I really do believe a better way of saying that is literally all, all of you, you are right. got something right. Yeah, you got a piece of it right. <laughs> Dylan's like, you're all fucking wrong. It's like, well, <laughs> no, I, don't I about think y'all wrong. I said, I said y'all are right, but also wrong because y'all missed one. Good Hunting. Oh, we did. We this did. is tied. The, the, yeah, all so. three of them are 17 minutes. 17 minutes is the longest video. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, but, um, yeah. We're gonna the go ahead and clo- We're gonna close out on that. Um, but uh, I do want to go ahead and say that obviously, if you haven't watched the show, you should watch it. Obviously, we all fucking yeah. love it, and we had yeah. great things to say about it. Um, uh, I should have, I definitely <laughs> fucked up the intro. I should have said fucking that I was a co-host because fucking Dylan just decided he was gonna fucking jack this fucking sorry. ship and just fucking. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> he was just like, all right, I got this for us. We were getting way off us. topic. Oh, Chris, man, it was either gonna be you that brought us back or one of us. Dylan, but we would get way off it. Dylan first. wanted to get the fuck he wanted to say about this fucking show out, and he was like, <laughs> "If I can't do it on my own, I'm gonna steer the ship that way." <laughs> no, you're good, Dylan. It's it's fine. It's it's great. <laughs> but anyways, I would like to say that if you guys enjoyed this content, well, we enjoyed making it for you. So please make sure that you like and subscribe. Also, make sure you hit us up in the comments below to let us know what your favorite episode was and what you thought about the show. Make sure that if you want a more direct form of communication, hit us up on those Twitter links, or you can come by and stop in those Twitch links and watch this game, have fun, you know, just come hang out. But at the end of all this, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and we will see you next time.